What's up, everybody? I am Apache, and I am here with Ground Zero. This podcast is a podcast where we give you the news, the insights, my opinions, my thoughts, and my ignorance. Basically, I'm just spilling whatever I feel like spilling. So anyways, let's get on with the first stuff. We're going to be talking about WCC, HCW, CR Fire Pro, NAW, AOW, and LWL, which is an upcoming Fed for the fans and for basically everybody who likes wrestling. So, I want to give you my insight on WCC, Wrestling Cup Classic. And my first part is Mar Rivers is beat Tahano X in a non-title match, and solidify himself as a credible threat to to Tohano X's North Atlantic Championship. So, my thoughts? Mar Rivers could win. He could beat Tohano X and become a champion. But would they they fist off at the Royal Classic? We may never know. But my opinion, I think Mar Rivers can beat Tohano X, become North Atlantic Champion, and run wild with the belt. It's just my opinion. Do I take it as fact? I'm just saying what I feel, saying what I say, and say it right. Next one. Emo Boy has turned on the fans of WCC, the WCC faithful, and aligned himself. God dang it, helicopter. I don't know if you hear it, but there's a helicopter running wild on me. It's just, I don't know if it's low or it's just in the air, but it's just, you can hear it from here. Anyways, Emo Boy turned on the WCC Faithful and aligned himself with the Coven. Before we get to, you know, telling everything that, that happened, I'm going to say this. The Coven, when I first saw them, I thought they were baby faces. Like, Edgy baby faces. But now that I think about it, the coven acting more of a heel stable than I thought they would be. Do I like the coven, in my opinion? Nah, I'm 50 50 with that. But Emo Boy with the coven, I think that's a kind of, to me, is a good idea. But at the same time, I don't really care. <laughs> Emo Boy actually showed that he is a good wrestler in a way. But the way he won and the way he debuted for the Coven is actually one of the smart ways in booking decisions. That's just me. And they actually, from my reports, they jumped Mar Rivers backstage, the Coven. Well, two people jump one person, so I guess that's kind of a jump. They beat up Ma Rivers backstage before his match against Tahano X, and somehow Ma Rivers actually beat Tahano with a disadvantage of his health. Yay! Anyways, what do I think about this? They could run wild. But after the downcline of Zack Roper, after he lost the WCC champion to Kano, it's becoming, he become desperate to the point that he needs another person on his side. Apparently he got bones and some other people with the coven, but we may never know how that will actually work out when in his favor. Speaking of Kano, he showed why he's the WCC champion. Kano beat Jay Bomber in the main event just to show why he is the champion. Before the match, before the show even started, Kano cut a promo at a local indie show talking about how everybody's not a wrestler. And he's a wrestler. And he's a wrestler's wrestler that trains, trains, trains to become a pro wrestler. So that five times fast. And basically, Kano just... Not bury the roster, but just downgrade the roster to fighters. 
and then just become himself. Throughout the whole promo, talk talk trash about Zach Roper, and basically, he showed why he's a wrestler. By him winning his match in a really epic fashion, in a very good contest between two wrestlers. But, Kano and Zach Roper will face off at the Royal Classic. But to my reports, Kano must defend his title against Kaiju before the Royal Classic. That's going to be interesting. Very, very interesting. Because if Kano loses his title... What does that mean for the feud? Would it continue or would it end it? My opinion, Kano shouldn't go for, shouldn't do that match, but do a tag match instead, and then do the kaiju match after Royal Classic, because after that, who's going to face Kano for the championship after Royal Classic? If there's if there if there's going to be another show, so we'll see. We'll see. My thoughts of WCC this week, even though I might even though I might do another episode just to give you what's going on in, on that day. My thoughts. The booking is weird, but at the same time, the storytelling is actually kind of good. I mean, we barely got some good undercard matches, but. The main event match is actually kind of cool. Strike Force was actually pretty. Two matches was terrible. Both matches went way too long, and there was some shit. They were terrible matches. <sighs> but the rest of the card was actually there was actually kind of fine. The main event was epic. Not because Kano was in the main event. Actually, it's just because they brought out two good wrestlers that actually got a chance to wrestle. They did showcase some upcoming talent, which is really good, which is pretty dope. And some talent that shouldn't be on the card, but we show and but we but ugh, oh my god, how do I explain this? They expose some wrestlers to not being good wrestlers and they expose the wrestlers by some of them getting hurt in the ring. And we're never going to update on Carmella Nocta. So, what's the next, man? Trap Down's next. I heard Kano's in a tag match. And Zach Roper is, one, is going up against Mateo in a one on one match, forced by the commissioner. Because Zach Roper is stuck in and dodging that beef. <laughs> That's just my opinion, guys. Don't don't take it as fact. Next news, HTW. HTW, good show, but I have to rewatch it. I have to rewatch it just to get my in-depth review and my in-depth analysis on the show. All I know from my memory is that Ecuador retained his title. And he got beat the hell up by his best friend before the match. We got some title retentions, I think, and some title changes. And John Nubai got his ass beat by a clown. It was a good show, but I got to rewatch it just to get my in-depth analysis on my next part of the of this podcast. Next thing, CR Fire Pro News. The reign of terror has begun. That's all I gotta say. The reign of terror. Ha- the reign of terror has begun. Cole is keeping them titles hostage. We got a new women's champion, and is going with Natural Born. <sighs> a new Master Force champion was crowned, which is not the reign. Which is not the reason why the reign of terror began. The reign of terror because. You're going to have some very, very interesting few weeks. 
What's next, man? I said the tag team champions have been retained. The women's champion has been crowned new champion by Natural Born. Oh, crap, my mic. So, Master 4 title has been changed hands. Then we got the heavyweight championship. Life took the title. He now he's keeping it hostage. Probably. We may never know. But all I know is that the hell? <laughs> all I know is that life didn't need life support and life showed reality to Kaijin. And then we got Sobriana. Oh my god. Be eternal. And told her bitch ass to go back to the road. That was the funniest and the saddest thing I ever heard and seen in my life. That match was alright. But the thing is, Sobriana won the match and won the title, which is definitely a big downfall to me. I hate her. I don't hate her. I just don't like her. But she's just an asshole. So I need to say, CR, please get the title off of her. <laughs> and also, justice for junior power champion. That motherfucker should not get jumped by no woman. Well, women. Because that was terrible. Beat down, chop in the face, while the other chick just talking shit. And got threatened and, and, and then got threatened by Van Pierce, that big referee that should have been in Coliseum but didn't. He will do great in Coliseum, but I respect his decision. But dang, it wasn't a good day for him <laughs> at all. It was never a good day to be junior power champion. That dude never won a junior championship, right? Did he ever win a junior championship? I don't think he did. That sucks, man. I like Junior Power Champion. That sucks, but. Anywho. NAW News. New Year's Retribution is this Thursday. And I will announce the card. Once I get the card up. There we go. It's already there. Tough. So we got six matches, okay? Six matches. We got the we got the NAW. Well, it's gonna kick off with the NAW Gateway Championship, Jariah Sin versus Derek Gunslinger, the champion. The next match is the NAW Tag Team Champions. The newly crowned NAW Tag Team Champions, no respect, will defend the title against a mystery team. And then we got a Shiva versus Illegal Drown Soil match. Beef. Because Illegal Drown Soil interfered in her number one contender match and cost her the match. Well, it was the number one contender match? Was it? Oh, shoot. I don't remember. Then we got NAW Women's Championship match, Kava Prince versus Val Jester. And then Brandon Sharp versus Sean Stevenson. Then the NAW Championship match, JKL versus T. Vincent. Those are the six matches for the for the New Year's Retribution event. And that will happen this Thursday. Probably around three. 3.30 or 3 p.m. or 5, depending on the, the time. Because we know Trap Down is going to be on um Thursday. So NW don't want to interfere in that time zone. They want to do their things their own way. They don't, even though they're on the same time zone or time, they don't want to interfere in other people's promotions. So they rest to respectfully put it on third time, which is 3 or 3.30 or 5, depending on the time. Anyways, AOW, Art of Wrestling. Art of Wrestling Andromeda is this Wednesday. And it's a the card is just wild. And I'm pretty sure the matches will be very awesome. 
I ain't gonna tell you the car because uh, I don't got the car. The car is not translated yet. We need to get the car translated because it's a Japanese promotion. Anyways, that's something. LWL Legacy Wrestling League. Oh boy, this league sounds like it's gonna be fun. Apparently, this show is going to come soon. And it's going to have two territories, East Coast and Southwest. Them territories are going to be, you know, having their own shows, their own events, and their own time. With their own roster. And from what I heard, basically, um, East Coast already got their titles made in... The Southwest, they're still getting the the stuff together just to, you know, get the venues, get the sh- roster. East Coast, they got the titles, but they still need to get the roster and find the venues. From, from, my, from what I heard, East Coast venue, they want as like a little gym or a, or a bingo hall. And they're going to run shows on there. While Southwest probably might run in a bingo hall or gym, you know, in the Southwest, <laughs> probably in Chicago. That's what I heard. They, they might be in Chicago, Illinois, big fella. And East Coast going to be probably in D.C. or Maryland, like the far Maryland. Probably in Baltimore. I don't know about Baltimore, baby. I don't know about Baltimore, baby. We, we over here crazy over here. Especially in the hood. You gonna die. <laughs> so, they, so from what I heard, there might be in Elliott City or some other place. Like Annapolis. I don't know. Either Annapolis, Elliott City, or somewhere in D.C. or Virginia. Hey, whatever floats their boat. So, from what I heard from my news sources, the titles is going to be different than the other feds since it's territorial. They would have one major title, which is the Legacy of Wrestling World Wrestling Classic Championship, their big title. And then... East Coast going to have the Tag Team Championships and the Continental title. While Southwest going to have the Women's Championship and the Limitless Championship. For the roster, from what I heard, Southwest wants this guy named Scooter. I mentioned Scooter because apparently on my notes, I find him interesting because his name is Scooter. While East Coast is going to have either JKL or Marcus Cat or both. Well, East Coast wanted JKL and they still trying to think about getting JKL, but they do got Marcus Cat or Marky Cat as he was named, but his name is Marcus Cat, so... That's his name. <laughs> and for the owners, Zero and Mr. Green, the owner p- position is literally been confirmed that Mr. Green is the is the owner of the promotion and Zero is the vice president and his and the helper to help Mr. Green run the promotion. He will run East Coast. Mr. Green will run Southwest. So I think that's all the news for today. So if you like this episode, like this podcast, and want to see more of the news, hey, give a like, subscribe, and and we will meet again. Catch you guys later. Ciao.